Frame remapping is the revolutionary new feature launched by Brompton Technology in software version 3.1. It unlocks a number of useful new workflows for virtual production and extended and augmented reality filming. In order to see how these would work in practice, Brompton and SmartStage experts Whitelight collaborated on a day of testing at Whitelight's Mermaid Theatre in the heart of the City of London. The purpose would be to test the delivery of some of these workflows in practice in a working environment. Frame remapping allows LED screens to simultaneously display multiple feeds of content. One potential workflow this unlocks is the shooting of a real-time 3D environment from multiple camera angles. Here's Andy Hook of Whitelight to tell us more. So what we've got going on here is two different camera perspectives being shown on the LED wall at the same time. So on the top camera here, we've got the jib camera. So if the jib camera moves around now, you'll see that the content's being generated to the perspective of the jib. And if we stop the jib moving and move the second camera around on the screen down here, you'll see we've got content being generated to a completely different perspective of the second camera, both visible on the LED wall at the same time to each camera. And to the presenter or the person using the stage, they're seeing a composite of both images. So almost like a, a blurred or superimposed version of the images. If we move both the cameras together at the same time, you'll see that both cameras are getting an image to the perspective of that camera, perfectly stable, showing two different images on the same LED wall. So we can now take the B-roll from both of these cameras and go and edit this production in post, but having all the benefits of using a virtual production stage in terms of reflections and, and shadows and the connection with the content. Another key workflow this enables is the ability to film actors on a virtual set and in front of a green screen or other chroma key screen simultaneously. This gives directors and producers of content a useful option, both in post-production and in the ability to produce different versions of the finished piece. Here's Andy again. So in this example, we've, rather than using two camera perspectives, we've now got a camera perspective. You can see the jib is moving around. The content is showing to the perspective of the jib, but we can also be shooting against a green screen. So one LED volume is creating a hero camera shot that's perspective tracked and allowing us to shoot against a green screen so we can change the content in post. And if somebody else was to walk on stage and we had a wardrobe issue where they're maybe what they're wearing is too close to the key we're using, we could change the color of the key dynamically and shoot against any color we might want to. So we've got a really flexible environment now that allows us to have an, a full XR environment with a tracked camera and taking content away to, to re-edit in post. Andy and Rob Fowler from Brompton also found time to discuss what these workflows mean for users and where they think this technology could benefit them. This all kind of came about when we showed you what we developed at Brompton in 3.1 yep. um, with HFR plus APIs and in particular frame remapping. Um, and we began to sort of think about what that might look like in terms of the workflows that you deliver, especially in spaces like this. I actually got the chance to come down here a couple of weeks ago and see this space, which is fantastic. Um, and, uh, and it got us to sort of thinking to, to how we can start to use those technologies on a smart stage. Perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of where the smart stage concept has, has come from, because you guys have been doing it a lot longer than, uh, than, than, than just this explosion that we've seen in the pandemic. Absolutely, yeah. It, it's been quite a, a long journey and really exciting journey for us. Uh, we started it about four years ago now. Uh, it was for um, broadcast to begin with, so it was for a broadcast client who wanted to build a more immersive uh, sports analysis tool. And uh, we delivered um, the Cube for Eurosport, and that um, turned into a, uh, an R&D project when we came back from there to improve the workflow, improve the systems around what we can do inside LED volumes, virtual production, and XR. And uh, our product, Smart Stage, was, was born out of the back of that, which is a productized version of, of XR. So there's an example of that behind me here on the stage at, at The Mermaid. And over this four-year journey, as I said, we pioneered it for broadcast, and it's turned into a tool that we're using for virtual production, conferences, corporate clients, education, a whole host of, of different markets who are all looking for the same set of advantages that XR brings to broadcast. So that believability of interacting with content, the natural reflections, the natural shadows, the small footprint that Smart Stage allows you to have, but yet yeah, huge look on camera. So when the pandemic hit, um, feels like a paternity ago now already, but when the pandemic hit, 
um, we had a lot of clients who were already using the technology um, who needed to carry on delivering virtual events. And we had clients who just weren't able to deliver traditional events or broadcasts anymore. So uh, we used Smart Stage to help them continue to do that during the pandemic, doing all sorts of things from music events to, um, to comedy, to conferences, to broadcasts, uh, originally in our warehouse at White Light in Wimbledon. And then we moved that to the Science Museum. They gave us a home for a number of months there. And eventually we moved it here to the Mermaid. Um, and the benefit of it being here at the Mermaid is we've got a 600 seat auditorium in front of us. We've got the smart stage on, on a stage here with a full gallery and production facility. And this has allowed us to do huge corporate events and broadcasts um, and clients who would deliver traditional events on a stage or at a conference are now pivoting to be able to use XR technology and smart stage to, to do those. And through that journey, we've, we've been exposed to a whole range of different use cases, different clients, different people trying to, to go on their own journey with the technology. And then, you know, obviously moving on with what we've got now in, in something like 3.1 with frame remapping, I mean, uh, does that open up some new possibilities for you to, to solve some of the, uh, the applications that you come across? Yeah, ab absolutely. I think I remember that the first conversation when you rang me and, and we were just talking about what was going to be coming in 3.1 and some of those features we'd have access to. And immediately the brain was going, the cogs were turning. There was a whole list of projects I remember giving you that were things that I'd picked up where we've been exposed to so many different clients and, and markets over the past four years I've quite often found myself saying um, oh we can't quite do that in XR or oh, that's an interesting use case I don't think we've explored that yet and different people all going on their own journeys with virtual production and realizing what you can do what you can't do or maybe what we haven't thought of yet and a lot of those projects I remember reciting to you were all ideas I'd had where I was thinking actually maybe now that's possible maybe we can think rethink how we were going to do that things uh, like shoot multicam and we can give a client the, the B-roll, the ISO footage afterwards for them to go and edit in post. Whereas at the moment, we're tied to only having one LED volume. When we switch cameras, we have to switch the perspective in the LED volume. So we need to produce them and cut as live. And we've found, particularly in the conference and corporate event world, those creative agencies like to, uh, to stream something or do something as live, but then go back to the cutting room and, and edit that later and, and do something else in post. And they've found that to be a limitation of virtual production and XR. And we're really excited that this gives us an opportunity to not only do it as live, but also give them that B-roll to go and create something separate in post. In an environment like this, where we've potentially got a hybrid audience, we can create a view for the audience that's different to the view that the cameras are capturing. And that may even allow us to regionalize content. So the PowerPoint displays that are part of the content the audience are watching is different to the PowerPoint display that the camera is capturing for a, a audience in a different market, for example. And then also the ability to uh, allow us to capture green screen at the same time as the content on the virtual production volume is game changing, potentially, particularly for virtual production and broadcast, where they're going to get all the benefits of shooting in a virtual production environment, the reflections, the shadows, the believability with that engagement in the content but they can also take away a green screen recording of that that was captured simultaneously. Um, and that's something that we've wanted to be able to do on a number of projects over the last few years and just not been able to do and had to do those as separate shoots. And now we can combine it and do it all in one take. Amazing. Well, we're really looking forward to actually being able to test some of these workflows in a space like this today with the setup that you've got. And I think uh, we're, all, we're all excited to see you know, what, what these tools can, can be used to do in the hands of uh, people with as much experience as yourselves. And we're really excited to be able to take this out to the clients and, and help them take their XR journeys even further. Thanks, Andy. Excited.